Hey everyone, it's Elena and Liam, and we are here at the local Lowdown concert with Del Paxson, who just played an amazing set. Uh, welcome. Hi. Yeah. Uh, if you'd first, oop, if you'd <laughs> like to first introduce yourselves and then what you do with the band. Hey, what's up? I'm Greg. I play drums in Del Paxton. I'm I'm Dylan. I play guitar and sing. Yeah. And then there was one other person as well. Yeah, he doesn't matter though. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> right. Don't worry about him. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't have a name. He doesn't have really any responsibilities. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. Classic classic bassist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the name of your band, Del Paxton, is the same as a character from the movie That Thing You Do. Is that where you got your name? If not, did you guys settle on the name Del Paxton in a different way? Uh, no, you got it. <laughs> it was that easy. You know what? I'll, I'll add this, though. Um, I'm a huge fan of that movie, and yeah. that character was like an iconic role when I was a kid. I found that movie when I was like 10, and it was all about a drummer. And so I obviously was like very fond of it, uh, but there's a... There's just a lot of wisdom in that character, Del Paxton, and I always like really loved him. I convinced uh, the guys to be Del Paxton because we literally didn't think anyone was ever gonna really pay attention to what we were doing. Mm. We were just like having fun in the basement, and then we were like, "Yeah, let's let's call it Del Paxton." And then, then you know, here we are, ten years later, married to that uh, decision. Yeah. So yeah. you were the one who initially came up with the name. Yeah, I don't know if I really like legally want to take responsibility for that <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. on air. Yeah. No, I am. But yeah, Greg yeah. McClure uh, <laughs> is responsible. So Tom Hanks, come at me if you gotta. Hey. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> so um, the follow up to All Day, Every Day, All Night has been long anticipated in the works for a while. How is this upcoming project auto locator evolved over the years that it's been in development? How has it like evolved up into the from the past five years? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we've been writing it for a while. We had a few songs that were kind of, I don't want to say like that we'd been working on since the last record. Um, but it was kind of a culmination of just like the things that we'd been writing. Um, there's really no like mystery behind that. We, we just love playing music together and, um, we had a couple songs. I think the thing that really, um, drove this record was the recording of it. Like we, um, you know, went to uh, our friend's studio. It was a really cool environment. It was in a barn, like, in the town where you grew up, which is uh, Trumansburg, and it was just really comfortable and felt like we could get, like, some honest takes. And it was recorded... It was recorded uh, two tape. Yeah. So uh, it was 16-track, one-inch tape, which means uh, if uh, you have 16 tracks to record to, in a digital recording, you can record infinite tracks, right? And like harmonies and harmonies and harmonies and synths and trombones, whatever you want. Uh, in our process, it was 16 tracks and we had to make very conscious decisions. So that comes through, I think, uh, I hope, yeah. Yeah, so on that as well, I know you've released a couple singles leading up to the yeah. album, but what can we expect for the album as a whole and will it differ from your previous album? Um. You, yeah, well, yes and no. Uh, no, it's still like genre rock uh, from uh, the three of us. And so there's a lot of similarities, I think, that roll through. But uh, when you play, do anything for 10 years, uh, you should become more comfortable with the people that you are doing it with. And right. that's the case. So I think what you hear maybe in this record and our, our songwriting is just the ease that 10 years of being friends and playing music together have given us it's like a it's like a real uh like strong suit for us it's just like being able to critique songs with no ego or whatever you know what i mean like that process that creative process is like streamlined with our our years of of doing it that's really good to yeah. hear yeah. yeah thank you so dylan you did the uh the album art and it seems to tie into the first album cover a little bit so how did that all come together? And does like does release musically? Does it all kind of tie in thematically into the new record? Um, yes. No. <laughs> um, yeah. No. I, I'm I'm really fortunate that um, the my two friends that I play music with actually like really like my art. So um, it's always like a very I, I probably overthink it a little bit too much because I don't want to come off like oh this is my band and also I did the art for it. Um, so it goes through like a, a lot of edits, but. I I wanted to use like the 
image from the, like, I feel like a lot of emo records have the house on it, like American Football and um, the Hotel here, right? And, like, I was always fascinated with, like, like being in the house and looking out and kind of, like, the relationship with, like, technology and nature and, like, pre-digital printed material. Sounds like a really pretentious answer for the radio, but, um, but it, it, um, yeah, it, I wanted it like to kind of represent like an isolated figure kind of looking out like from a room. Um, so the first one was actually from an, an old Fredonia yearbook, um, of like the art building looking at like three man Hill, I guess is the, is the, yeah. And then this one, uh, we all talked about just like the kind of vibe we were feeling for this. It was like in the spring, kind of like at dusk. Um, so we wanted it to kind of reflect that. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I think you kind of hinted to what I'm getting at next, but you okay. guys are no strangers to Fredonia as yes. you, Dylan, are an alumni. <laughs> uh, and Del Paxton Go has Blue played Devils. at BJ's in the past. Uh, now that you have played at Main Street Studios, do you have any thoughts about the different venues as well as the current state of the music scene here? Um, yeah, I, I think I was just talking to someone. It's, um, we've, we've, I think as Del Paxton, we've only played BJ's. We played a, like a house venue when we first started out, but it was just kind of like a raging party, <laughs> which was fun. Um, but I think... Yeah, th this this is amazing. Like, uh, if we had something like this when we were here, um, this would have been really cool. We probably would have, um, you know, preserved some friendships a little bit longer by not like turning your living space into a venue yeah. and just saying, you know, this is like cool to keep it separate. And it seems like there's like a really good sound system and there's like a lot of support. Um, so it's great. I mean, I I wish that we had it when we were there, but you know, it's all it's all good. Right. It really has switched from from houses to being in these alternate locations, which is really interesting. I was just to add that after 10 years of doing this, obviously like the cycle of college, we see like new faces all the time. But the one thing that's been like consistent is like the respect that the crowd has had at Fredonia. Yeah. And that's really, I mean, you might be like, yeah, no duh, but it, it really is not that common. It's kind of rare to find people who show up, stay, listen, vibe, try to like what you're, they're hearing as opposed to just being like, you know, try to impress me, you know, let's see what you got. Everybody's really like, they're here to and have a good time. And so that's really awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, Dylan agrees with me. Yeah, yeah. As he should. Well, y'all are awesome, all three oh, of you. you. <laughs> and uh, it has been great. Thank you for talking to us, Del Anytime. Paxton. Uh, it's Ben Elena. And Liam with the local lowdown and we'll catch you next time. Bye everyone. Peace. Thank you.